What's up, everyone? This is Tatum. I'm back with another episode of Flowers. For those that's new to my channel, this is my segment where I like to give some of my favorite albums or albums that I feel lack appreciation their flowers. So today I'm going to be giving flowers to Outkast, Equimini. Did I do that right? It's weird, like putting the S's. Outkast is Outkast. Equimini came out in 1998. I remember I was like in a third grade when like Rosa Parks first came out and we was like, yo, you see that dude in that outcast group that's wearing the shoulder pads and blonde hip? <laughs> like, that's like equipment. I was the first album that like outcast album that like Andre really started embracing. Like, I think he just became, was he Andre 3000? I think he might've been Andre 3000 or AT audience, but he was really embracing the, the character. So it was Big Boy in the sense, like, Big Boy was wearing some crazy stuff as well, but just not on the extreme as uh, Andre. And it's funny, today on Twitter, there was, like, a, a kind of like a Big Boy, I guess, appreciation kind of thing. Somebody tweeted, like, uh, damn, Andre ain't never, like, been washed on a song. And somebody retweeted and it was like, that's crazy, because he was in a group with somebody that was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for five albums. <laughs> Uh, Quimini's Outkast's third album after Southern Playlistic and AT Aliens. To me, it's my favorite Outkast album. To me, it's their best album. I feel like this was the album where, like, if Southern Playlistic was the, you know, like the Southern pimp kind of thing, and then AT Aliens is like we're breaking out into like just eclectic kind of thing. And Quimini was like the bridge of them both and was just perfect. Like, that third album is always when the artist almost kind of gets, like, who they are. Like, you do the you do your first album, you don't know who you are, then you do your second album, trying to avoid the sophomore jinx, but then you get the third album, you learn a bit more, you, you're accustomed to things, you know how recording works, you know how the record company works, you know, just a little bit more. So I think, and even their chemistry, I think, was this is the best Outkast album as far as just chemistry for me. So Hard Knock Life... Equimini and Black Star all dropped on the same day. That's crazy. That's still a great day for hip hop. That's a that's a crazy day to have Jay Z, a tribe called Quest, Outkast, uh, and Black Star all drop on the same day. That had to be nuts. I won't take up too much of your time. I was gonna go through a couple records that I feel you know some of my favorites, and you know just give this album its credit it deserves. So let's get into it. The album begins with uh, well it's like a intro kind of thing hold on be strong but then it goes into return of the gangster well return of the g and i read today that it was uh like it was like turmoil within a group because big boy wanted to start the album with y'all scared but andre and some of the producers and things wanted to put return of the g which i think is a way better intro i think big boy was probably wrong with that but Rumor has it he missed his flight when they were mastering the album. So, like, he wasn't there, and they just chronologically ordered it the way they wanted to. It caused a fight within the group, and, but eventually it is what it is. You can't really change it after it's mastered. You can, but it's just too much of a hassle. But I'm glad they did start the album with that because I think that song kind of... It kind of opens, it lets you know where the band is at right now. I called him a band, it's funny. It kind of lets you know where the band is at right now. Uh just in that time you could tell big boy was like a father a full-fledged father and he was more about spitting game to like the young hustlers and people of that nature uh like he starts the verse off like a nigga don't want no trouble i just want to sit back and watch my little girl blow bubbles and <laughs> andre starts the record off with like people questioning his sexuality questioning him period like what's up with, uh what's up with andre is he gay is he on drugs is he <laughs> when y'all gonna break up nigga i'm feeling better than ever what's wrong with you you get down like tight shit like that when i first heard that i was like oh shit <laughs> like this is like some crazy ass just rapping style is just different like outcast is just it's just different like that name like if any band or group has a name that fits i think outcast fits them the most like that's a perfect name for them. But Return of the Gangster, great record to start the album with. I think, if I'm not mistaken, even, I'm not sure if it was out there, but I know it was close to the beginning of the album. Even if they have the skit of the person, the people shopping for uh, going into the record store, and if you get this and this, I get that new Outkast album, I ain't even out yet. And they like, man, I don't want to sell new Outkast shit. They, first, they were some pimps, and then they some aliens. I don't know what the fuck they be on. And I just think that was funny to have that, like, on your album <laughs> like, like going on yourself like i think that was just a funny thing uh, and it kind of like it's like the eight mile thing like if we notice what you're gonna say you can't really say it after this point it's genius that goes into rosa parks which is probably the first song i heard from this as a kid 
uh, again, I remember watching the video and watching Andre Thousand and the shoulder pads and the puffy pants and Big Boy in the colorful clothes and just wondering, like, these guys just look so cool. But they also got sued for that record. <laughs> what was the line that Andre said on a Sleepy Brown joint? It was, and yes, you're getting sued by women who didn't get up off their seat off the bus. And I, and I, I just think that was dope that, you know, not that she sued them, but that, you know, they could find light in the dark situation but it's kind of stupid now i look back at it that had to be people around rosa Pox. was what the fuck would rosa Pox know about outcast at that time in 1998 skew it on the bobby featuring raekwon which was probably an unexpected collaboration back in 1998 but it kind of fit to have uh raekwon on one of the outcast kind of records it just it gelled perfect deliver this through the audio get me mafia ghetto mafia so blow hydro and back it up so like he rhymed with that the whole freaking verse and didn't let up we the type of people that don't bury the axe or the hatchet every time we see your lane we smash it like that shit was just ridiculous was skewing on the bobby was that the Andre verse where he starts off? Fine, the common denominator, the nigga numerator. Never know who to hate, a nigga's catered to your ego. I'm sorry, like Atari, who's the cousin to Coleco Vision. Called a Rico back on the street like Chico, the bar, she large and got a lack in the door. Andre just stopped going off at that. <laughs> like, Equimini was the, was the moment that I think that narrative was probably getting built. Andre would just start spazzing, like, just lyrically and conceptually from Skewed on the Bobby verse to the Quimini verse, uh, which is probably one of my best lines, so I would just save it from him. But a Quimini record, just, that record is also dope because it shows you that Andre can kill it in one way, but Big Boy can kill it in another way. What the fuck was Big Boy's, uh, now the times to get on like Spike Lee, say get on the bus, go get your work and keep your beeper chirping is a must. See you on that dust from Cornstars. Familiar with that smack man. The music like that green stuff provided to you by Pac-Man. Big Boy was able just to connect to the streets like perfectly. Like just feeding game and just inspiration to the streets and letting you know what you should do. Let your paper stack instead of going to overkill, pay your fucking beeper bill. Or get a laptop. Make a business for yourself, boy. Set some goals. Like he always says some shit like that. <laughs> like, like just do something. Get up, get out and get something. Like that was always like. <laughs> but equipment is dope. Uh, Synthesize is probably one of my favorite records on here to have George Clinton on there and even Andre Verse on there. Uh, big Boy singing the hook. <laughs> and what was it? Synthesizer, Mike will raise me, give me a pill so I can make seven babies. My nose ain't right. Think I need a new one. That's the thing about Outcast, too, because I wouldn't say they were like the first Southern act to have substance, but they were like a Southern rap group that had substance that pushed it to the forefront. Like, I think that's one of the things that like was the appeal that made them like when. Uh, best new artists at the Source Awards and things of that nature because they was actually spitting. They was actually saying something. They was over these groovy beats. They were like eclectic enough for you to like, mm, I want, I don't know. But then you, you got to peek your head in just to see what the hell's going on. So yeah, I just love them for that. Synthesizer, Slum, West Savannah. That was held off from uh, Southern Playlistic and they put it on here. I thought that was dope. Uh, the Art of Telling Stories, part one and two. Funny part is, as a kid, you know, listening to because i didn't get into equipment out of the album until probably my late teens but just the singles from here the art of storytelling part one i knew it from just the uh, slick rig version so every time i hear the album version i'm doing slick rig ad libs <laughs> it's like over the empty spot <laughs> like because that's the way i heard it i remember the video with the paintings and the puppets uh look like cousin skeeter and shit <laughs> like i remember all that shit so i i know this song I always think about the Slick Rick version when I hear this. And I think that's, nonetheless, part one and two are fucking amazing. And even to have the, the second part was just a little bit more dark. I mean, the first one's dark, too. I mean, Sasha Thumba got found in the back of a school with a baby and a um, <laughs> two months due. <laughs> so I guess that one was sad, too. But the second one is just like, baby, can you hear that? Because, baby, I heard it, too. And like, having Big Boy just come in and the beat picks up a little bit. And he's like... Uh, Fuck abortion, I get, in the, I get in the booth to run the final portion. <laughs> the beat was very dirty and the vocals had to store shun. I thought that was just in between the grandma, the storm, and it's like, cut that phone off, it's thundering outside and lightning. I thought that was just also cool just to give you, they had great skits on their albums, something I do miss about these times. I don't know if they could last, live up in these times, but it was some great skits to tie everything together. Mamacita, that Andre verse is just fucking amazing. Uh, Sporty Odie, Dope Delicious. Just one of the greatest records of all time. Just just how unorthodox that song is. Like, it ain't even... That song's so or unorthodox that... I don't even know why we like it so much. Like, it's just so groovy and cool. Like, 
it's like this spoken word kind of thing, but it's rapping. It's like this jazz. It's like this uh, uh, HBCU kind of horn section. It's just. It's just dope all around. One of Outkast's biggest, to me, uh, most standout records to me. Uh, Y'all Scared, uh, featuring some of the Goody Mob crew. Uh, and they thank you, Freestyle, Liberation. Just to have, man, they had CeeLo. It was CeeLo, Outkast, and Erica Badu on the record. Like, we just we just be taking shit for granted sometimes. <laughs> like, you don't understand how crazy that is. Like, that lineup is just nuts. Chunky Fire, they closed it out with. And I thought it was just, that beat is just fucking dope probably one of my favorite beats on the album uh and then to have the source awards skit at the end of it just to let you know everything's full circle now look at us <laughs> like they were booing us at the source awards in 94 but turn around four years later is here we are and big boy has a line on here he's like i gotta hit that source i need my other half a mic because i seldom play a lizard kind of music was a classic right <laughs> like like we forget we still harping over that sort of shit that gotta be that has to be a great feeling to just when it's all said and done look at the legacy we left behind even after like the beginning they were booing at us in new york now they love us let me get into my best songs i'm gonna go with Aquimini, Spodioti, and it's a coin flip between liberation and the artist storytelling part one but i'll probably go with part one because that song is just i probably listen to that song more than liberation worst song i'm gonna go with slum slum is the worst song best line like i said before andre 3000 what does he say my mom warps and bends uh floats the wind count to 10 meet the twin andre ben welcome to the lion's den origin no skin many men comprehend i extend myself so you go out and tell a friend uh sin all depend on what you believe in then. faith is what you make it that's the hardest shit since mc ren alia can blend right on in which you can look again because i swear i spot one every now and then it's happening again wish i could tell you when andre this is andre y'all just gonna have to make amends like come on man even the sun goes down heroes eventually die horse goes off the line why x y Nothing is for show, sure, nothing less forever, but until they close the curtain, it's him and I, Quim and I. Like, that's just so dope. <laughs> like, even the title of just like, hey, let's put our signs together. <laughs> I'm Aquarius, you a Gemini? A Quim and I. <laughs> The cover's dope. The cover reminds me of like one of those old like 70s uh, black exploitation kind of covers. Like, I remember like, hanging with my granddad as a kid and at his house and at his friend's house they would have those kind of things up in their like basements like the black woman with the hair the naked black woman or the pimp kind of thing i was like y'all really think y'all was cool <laughs> let's wrap this shit up though Woo. to close this out outcast equipment fucking classic album uh outcast is just so great that if somebody says another Outkast album is their best album or their favorite, I'll just give it to them and tip my hat to it because they're like one of the only few artists that all their albums are just dope and classic. Except Idol Wild, but we know what that is. But other than that, all their albums are just so fucking amazing and every one of them are different and every one of them is just a building block to the next one till we get to like Speaker Box Love Below. And Equimini is just, I don't know, it's one of those albums that it's dark like equipment is a dark album if you look at it and just it's very dark it, that's why i think uh i think staying on you the next album was a little bit more upbeat and a little bit more happy and a little bit more uh commercialized but this one is dark if you think about it to me maybe it's probably why i like it <laughs> like like everything about it, the subject matter the beats uh yeah and they it seemed like they had something to prove on this album and which is why i think they ended it with that source clip at the end of it like i said again that full circle kind of thing uh but just dope two thumbs up five stars whatever you want to call it so i'm just happy to give flowers to it today yeah and that's pretty much it as always though i'm tatum peace